Hello, everyone. I think we have um, quite a few people here, so we will go ahead and get started. My name is Amanda Fallon, and I am the Director of Marketing and Development at the Community Foundation, and I am your main contact for Give for Good, as well as Ashley Crook, who is on as well, and she is our marketing associate. And so you will hear um, from both of us often and can reach out to us for any uh, questions or needs that you might have. All right, so we are really excited to kick off the 10th annual Give for Good um, and introduce you to our new platform. So we have transitioned to a new platform this year with Mighty Cause, and we are really excited about it. And so we're going to um, show you all the ins and outs of that today. And Dawn is here with us um, from Michigan, and um, <laughs> she is the expert on the platform, and she's going to show you guys all the, the tips and tricks that you need to know. Um, so 10th anniversary, we're super excited. Um, for those of you who don't know, Gift for Good started in 2014, and long before my time. And we, when we started, we had 76 nonprofits. That year, we had 24 donors participate and raised $1.2 million. Since then, we have grown to over 200 nonprofits every year, and now we are um, averaging about 5,000 donors, and last year we raised um, a $2.4 million. So since inception, Gift for Good has raised $16.6 million, and we're super proud of that. You guys do that. Um, we are just here to be a support and provide uh, trainings and marketing, and so we love partnering with you to raise a lot of money for our region. Um, so we can't wait to see what we do this year. So let me introduce you to Dawn. Dawn is our project manager with Mighty Cause. And we've been working closely with her for about the last six months when we started looking for a new platform throughout the migration to Mighty Cause. And now she is our project manager. And so we work with her every other week. We meet and uh, virtually and um, just go over all the ins and outs and logistics of the platform and making sure that everything is set for a successful giving day. So, Dawn, I will let you introduce yourself or introduce Mighty Calls and get started. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. Um, like every or like Amanda said, um, my name is Dawn. I'm really, really excited to help you all this year. Uh, I'm really excited to show you all of the uh, new tools and features that you'll be able to take advantage of for this uh, 10th year anniversary. Um, in case any of you aren't familiar with Mighty Calls, um, we have been around since about 2006, and uh, we are a year-round uh, fundraising suite platform um, for nonprofits. We have a specific giving day uh, tool set and uh, kind of niche market, uh, but we also offer the year-round uh, version of our software for just any nonprofit to come. Um, so lots of tools are included, which you all will also be able to take advantage of through the giving day, like peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, uh, uh, donation tools, social sharing, um, et cetera. So uh, I'm really excited that you'll be able to uh, take part in all of the tools that we have to offer. And uh, we're always happy to help um, kind of teach you and help you learn the tools since that's a big part of, you know, kind of switching platforms and getting used to everything so that you can try and raise uh, as much money as possible on the day of. So today, uh, during the uh, Getting Started webinar, um, we're going to run through the basics for this year's Gift for Good. Uh, we are going to talk through um, kind of getting started on the platform. I will be doing a platform walkthrough. So I'm going to show you, you know, your profiles, where to find everything, how to, you know, kind of um, change, uh, you know, customize it in certain ways, um, and basically just give you an overview of everything that's available to you. We have lots of resources that um, will allow you to do any like deep dives into certain features or functionalities that you think are interesting or you wanna know more about. Um, so I'll uh, reference those as well. Um, and then at the end, after the site demo, um, all of our information, we'll do a Q&A session. Um, if you want to let us know your questions at any time during the presentation, um, you're welcome to use the Q&A uh, um, button on your Zoom uh, webinar module. Uh, so you can go ahead and enter them in there and then we will answer any questions that come in either during the demo or after um, uh, at that time. So um, yeah, 
Okay, so uh, Give for Good Basics. Um, so this year's Give for Good is going to be on May 2nd. Uh, advanced giving this year begins on Tuesday, April 18th. Uh, so you can see the website right there, giveforgoodnla.org. Um, the main things that your organization needs to do for this year, as in every year, make sure that you customize your profile on the um, giveforgoodnla.org give site. Um, that is one thing that I will be touching on today, uh, just kind of, um, you know, kind of tips and really some pointers on making a really interesting and vibrant profile for your donors and supporters to come and give for you during the giving day. Uh, always important to plan the fundraising campaign. Uh, people do the most when they're able to plan and get things set up ahead of time. Um, that aspect of it is going to be something that we will hit on more in detail during our next webinar, which we'll, you know, mention later on uh, in this presentation. Uh, promotion of the campaign is something that you'll need to do as well. Uh, you'll, you'll want to invite your supporters to either donate or participate as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. And then, of course, you'll want to raise money to win all the awesome prizes that are available uh, during this year's Gift for Good. Okay, so... Just some rules and reminders. I know most of you know this, but we have a lot of new people this year. So we want to remind you that you are raising unrestricted dollars during Gift for Good. You can highlight your programs. You can, um, we want you to showcase all of them, but we cannot uh, commit to our donors that their dollars are going to a specific place. And the reason for that is not because we are trying to um, control too much, but because your grants come from us. Your, your, the donations you raise come from us in the form of a grant. And because of that, when we enter a grant, we have to enter the purpose for that. And so if we did every purpose for all 200 and something organizations, that would just be too time consuming. So we need um, you to understand that it is strictly for unrestricted purposes. When those dollars come to you, um, you can decide what to do with those. But we just really need um, the donors to understand that that is strictly for unrestricted purposes. So um, no benefits can re be received from Gift for Good donations. So we ask that you are not soliciting sponsors or members if they are going to receive goods or services um, from the donations that they give you. Um, we send the tax receipt because the donations come to the community foundation. So please do not send a receipt. We encourage you to send um, thank you notes to your donors, but not an official tax receipt because uh, we take care of that and they actually get that on uh, when they donate through their receipt, email receipt. So um, if you have a donor who comes to you after the fact um, and needs a, a receipt reissued, which we're getting a lot of that right now, feel free to send them to me and I will take care of that. So if you are hosting an event for Give for Good, if you're branding your event as a Give for Good event, it can be any time between early giving to the day of. We do require that you provide a certificate of insurance naming community foundation um, as a holder of that. So if you, we, there's details about that on the website and we can provide more if you have questions, but we need that um, in our office by April 17th. And um, we do encourage you to host an event. So definitely look forward to um, either having people on your site, doing tours of your site, partnering with a local business, brewery, restaurant, and getting out there during the day of, because it's just a really exciting day. And we want to provide a lot of um, energy in the community. So we love going around and we will attend your event. Um, we'll stop in during the day of, send the photographer. So we definitely hope that you will take advantage of that. And go to the next slide. Okay, so the Lanyard Fund, this is always something to um, just inform people about and remind past participants that the Land Yacht Fund is a bonus pool that helps you grow your earnings, cover the fees. Um, it encourages donors to give because they know that their um, donations are going a little bit further. It is not a dollar for dollar match. It is a proportional match based on the amount of the total dollars that you raise during Gift for Good. Um, so for instance, if we raise $2 million and your organization raises 100,000, then your organization would get 5% of the Lanyap Fund. Um, so you must raise $500 to receive Lanyap Fund dollars. And any donation that is over, any single donation that's over $10,000, only the first 10,000 will count towards 
your lanyard fund calculations. So just one more thing about the lanyard fund, just so that you know, um, community foundation puts in 100,000 of that lanyard fund. The Grayson Foundation puts in another 100,000. And then we raise the additional through community sponsors. Um, some of our past sponsors, and again this year, include Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana, the Powers Foundation, and Herd McElroy and Vestal. So we're hoping to get that. It, it's usually around 230,000. Um, we're hoping to get that up. We have a lot of sponsor requests out there. so. Um, we're hoping to raise more of that every year for you guys. So prizes um, throughout giving uh, Gift for Good, there are $22,000 up for grabs and prizes. That does come out of the Lanyard Fund dollars. Um, so we do 24 announcements, one every hour during Gift for Good on the day of. Um, and so I will be up all hours of the night awarding those prizes to you guys. So um, we'll talk more about strategy on those in the next webinar because you know, some organizations really have it down and they know how to get those prizes in the middle of the night and those specialty prizes. So we encourage you to come up with a strategy and uh, prepare for those. We do $10,000 in post gives day prizes. And so those are based on um, your budget size and you're in small, medium and large categories and then how much you grow um, from the year over year and how much in donors and in dollars. So we can, uh, again, provide more information. And that information is also on the website at giftforgoodnla.org. Okay. Um, one thing we want to remind everybody, and I don't know um, if this is well known, but, you know, we have, in my past being on the nonprofit end, I know we've had donors in the past who've wanted to give large gifts for Give for Good because they really would like the, the Lanyap um, dollars to increase their donation but they're really hesitant to do that and pay a platform and credit card processing fee. So what we offer at the Community Foundation is for your donors who want to give more than $5,000, and that can be 5,000 to just your organization or 5,000 um, in total. So we offer a donor advised fund option here and those donor advised funds are not subject to online processing fees. So, um, you know, if they want to get started with that, we can help them. Christy Gustafson is our CEO and she will walk through that with you and them. So please reach out to us. Um, those donations are also eligible for the Lanyard Fund match. So um, we encourage you to take advantage of that. And if you're working uh, with your donors ahead of time and you know that someone's making a large gift, if you want to help them save those fees and help you or, uh, get the full amount, then that is definitely a great uh, resource to take advantage of. Okay, so um, we wanted to kind of highlight a few things that are new this year. Obviously, everything will be new, uh, but a few things that we want to call out are um, you all have the ability to, um, you have increased matching capabilities for this year's Give for Good. Um, you have increased flexibility to customize your profile for this year's Giving Day as well. Um, we do, as I mentioned before, we do have an extensive resource library. We have um, eBooks, we have webinars, we have blog posts, um, we have downloads. Uh, so lots and lots of um, items that you can use to kind of, you know, either hone in on a certain feature uh, and learn more about it, or uh, we have lots of uh, resources based on just general fundraising tips and tricks and, um, you know, learnings as well. Um, you also have increased analytics uh, with your um, Give for Good account this year, and uh, we really, I want to point out um, your donor retention report that comes with your account. Um, uh, Amanda and team at the Community Foundation have worked really hard to migrate over all of your existing um, donation history from your previous platform. Um, and so you, because of that, you're able to take advantage of your donor retention report uh, right out the gate. Um, so I will, I'll touch more on that um, during the platform walkthrough, but that's one thing that I wanted to point out to everyone since you will be able to utilize it as soon as possible this year uh, for this year's um, giving day. The other uh, piece that I want to point out is um, we, they are giving you um, one of our, uh, what we call advanced features, which is kind of like a feature 2.0 um, called opportunities. So uh, we want to encourage everyone that has an event uh, to fill out uh, an, the opportunity section on their uh, profile. Um, I, I'll touch on that during the walkthrough, but um, 
this is a really great opportunity for uh, more than just you to get the word out about any event or you know virtual piece that you're having for this year's Gift for Good. Um, we have a special section on the website that um, allows donors to uh, search specifically for events, um, volunteer opportunities, et cetera, uh, that you all have going on. So um, that, uh, I think it's under community events. Is that right in the, on the main website? Yeah, so, so Yeah, so if you click on that, um, if you go to giftforgoodnla.org, click on community events, you can see the specialized search. So anything that you fill out, any of these opportunities that you fill out will automatically pop into that specialized um, events and opportunities and volunteer search. Uh, so that's definitely one thing that you'll want to pay attention to and fill out if you do have um, some sort of event uh, going on for this year. Uh, okay, so um, without further ado, let's get started in uh, our platform walkthrough. Um, so I am going to go to the site. Okay. So I wanted to um, kind of show you what just the public sees when they come to your uh, Gift for Good profile. Um, so let's say you send out an email with a link to your organization's profile page during Gift for Good. A donor will come here and um, they will see, you know, a banner image, a logo, your organization name, um, the donation button for them to give. Uh, you can set a goal. Uh, you can set um, metrics uh, to track uh, in real time during the campaign as well. You have the ability to add an about section that you can make really vibrant, add um, embed videos, add images, have headers, uh, bullet points, uh, bolding, italics, uh, add buttons. Um, so lots and lots of things that you're able to customize and make look very pretty uh, for people to come to your site. Um, there's different sections within the profile that you can add or take away, um, totally up to you. Um, you know, you can add in a media gallery if you have any, if you have any matching grants going on, um, you, the, the system will automatically have those show up for people. Um, if you have an opportunity, uh, that will show up on your main profile page as well. Um, and people can come in here and they can click on the opportunity and review all the information about it. They can register for it right online. Um, or, you know, you can link out to wherever they need to register uh, that you have it set up. Um, and then there's some quick organization data at the bottom. Most of the stuff on your profile will be pre-filled because it's stuff that we collect from the IRS. Um, but you can add in, you know, phone number, email, website, et cetera for your organization. So this is what people see when they come to your profile um, and kind of look through it all. Um, so uh, for you as the organization, when you log in for the first time, um, you are able to, uh, it's gonna show you your dashboard and write one thing that is new this year is we've got all on-page editing for you. So um, when you log in, you'll see your uh, login name, you can click on it and you can kind of see different, you know, your organization will be listed under here, your account will be listed under here. Um, so you'll be able to see uh, and navigate uh, throughout that um, with that drop down. Um, your organization page, you can go ahead and toggle edit mode on and off. So you can see when I turn it on, um, it gives me these uh, options. So we've got, um, you know, our theme color. So you could change this to be whatever your branding is. Um, you'll obviously, you'll still have the Gift for Good NLA, um, you know, kind of branding up top, but uh, you'll be able to add in, you know, your buttons uh, and any like hyperlinks and stuff will be in whatever your uh, branding colors are. Um, it's really easy to update images. Um, you can choose from uh, all of these different places to gather uh, uh, images from for your logo. Um, and then with uh, uh, the banner, you can add, you know, the banner as well, but we do have this handy gallery of images that you can choose from if you don't have, you know, anything that you, um, you know, fi are finding sufficient uh, for, you know, your organization. Um, so anything with a, a button next to it is essentially going to be editable by you. So you can come in and edit your goal. You can hide any sections that you want. Um, your page metrics, you can um, choose what you want to show. Um, we're going to have everyone's metrics uh, start essentially from the day uh, early giving starts. So we'll take care of that for you. But, you know, if you want to include uh, the amount raised or the number of donors or you only want to include the amount raised, then you'll be able to, uh, you know, manipulate that from 
this section as well, or you can completely hide it if you would rather the page be evergreen and not really show anyone how much you're raising. With the um, about section that you have on your page, this is a really important place where you can really explain your mission and let people know, you know, why you're participating in Gift for Good, what your organization is doing, you know, if you wanted to advertise any like programs or, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, upcoming campaigns or, you know, what you're doing for this campaign, uh, this is a great section to do that in. So you can see all of your editing tools are right up top. Um, you can, you know, you can save uh, any changes that you make, you can embed videos, um, you can add in emojis, you can add in tables. Uh, so it's really flexible. Um, and there's lots of stuff that you can do to make your page look really visually appealing for the people that are coming and visiting um, the, the page when you share it on your social media and in your emails and all that good stuff. There are, like I said, there's different sections that you can add. So um, we have a giving activity section where it's going to show in real time the donors that are giving. Um, the donors can choose whether or not they're anonymous or their amounts are hidden. So um, they make those choices during the donation process. But if you decided, you know what, I don't even want to show that section, then you can hide it. And then when somebody comes to your page, you can see if I toggle off edit mode, then it no longer shows up. So you can control the different sections that are uh, showing up on your profile page uh, during the giving day. And then these can be updated at any time. The page does not get locked down for editing. And so if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to uh, show your giving activity for the first part of the day and then decide, you know what, I don't want to show this anymore, then you can go in at any time and make those changes to your profile page um, during the campaign, after the campaign, before whatever you want. <clears throat> um, we've got a static media gallery. So these images, uh, when you, you know, when you add them, um, they will, uh, th they'll be there until you do anything different with them. Uh, we also have the ability for you to connect to your Instagram or Facebook galleries. This is really nice if you're, um, you know, a really small organization that works off of volunteers. This, these sections are really nice because anytime you update your Instagram photos, then this section will update on your profile. And so then you don't have to come in, you know, every year and like re-add new media, make sure your pictures are up to date. Like this will feed in from, you know, your Instagram or your Facebook so that, you know, that section is going to be all set uh, for you when the next um, go around for Give for Good starts. Uh, and then, like I said, and if you have any matches set up, those will show up here. Um, if you have any volunteer opportunities, those will show up here as well. Uh, organization data, um, this is a demo site, so it has a lot more than what you guys will like need or probably want to fill out. But um, down here, though, it's super easy to make any changes if you need to update your phone number, uh, update your email. Um, and then you save it and it updates uh, right away. So um, that is your organization page. I had mentioned earlier that you get um, increased analytics uh, with your uh, new account. So that those can be found in the overview section. Um, so what you'll, what you'll see in this section are uh, analytic tiles, um, which is gonna show you you know, kind of stats over, uh, it, it defaults to the last 30 days, but if you, you know, want to change it to a different time period, then you totally can. Um, so these are, this is, this section is going to give you a really good idea of kind of how you're performing during Give for Good, um, uh, you know, when uh, early giving starts. So you can add in, you can adjust any of the tiles, you can add in new tiles if you wanted to see your highest donation, um, you know, if you wanted to see, you know, how many shares that, people have given you over the last couple of days if you wanted to you know remove card cards or um, if you want to move cards you can do that too so you can really personalize this section um, to uh, allow you to have a quick glance of how you're doing um, and uh, you know make really good strategic decisions from that um, same thing we have a chart uh, so you can see really easily year over year how you've been doing um, uh, for you know each year's gift for good um, the next section that I want to uh, 
go through is our fundraising tools section. So um, we will dive more into peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising, um, a little bit into matching grants, et cetera, in our next webinar. But I wanted to point out that these, this is a section where you'll be able to find those tools within your account. Um, the, the campaign section is going to tell you all the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers that um, either you've set up um, or that others have set up for you. So um, you can see total campaigns are all of the ones, all of the um, peer to peer fundraising pages that are benefiting you. And 10 of those have been set up by people who are a non admin uh, on your account. So um, you can see who the owner is um, and you can see what type of page they are, if they're an individual fundraiser, or if they've set up a team page. Um, you can see how much they've raised, the title, uh, the date that um, it was created and published. Um, and uh, you know if it's you know if it's the status of it if it's published if it's ended etc um, then you can filter through those as well and if you wanted to create you know a, a campaign um, from this page you can the other option especially for those uh, individuals who are wanting to set up a campaign for you for gift for good there's a fundraise button right on your um, right on your profile as well so they they can go there to set up a page you could also do it from there as well um, but you do have that button uh, within your campaign section too. Um, the other uh, tool I wanted to point out um, is our uh, widget that you can put on your website. This widget is going to funnel any donations collected through it right through Give for Good. So um, that way, this is a really nice way to be able to have a wide array of places that can collect funds and um, uh, for the Give for Good campaign. Um, so you can, you know, one of the one of the pieces that we really encourage is like if you go all in, um, you can add, you know, a donation button that's connected straight to Give for Good uh, right on your website. Um, you can add, you know, the mini uh, donation form right on your website as well. That's again connected straight to Give for Good. So we have lots of resources on the um, widget that you can embed. Um, so if you have any additional questions about that or want to find out more about it, then um, I encourage you to visit the um, our support articles on it, uh, which there's links to that in the toolkit uh, as well. Um, one piece that uh, is, is really nice uh, for fundraising and that we have a pretty comprehensive grasp on is our um, matching grants. So with the matching grant manager in the fundraising tool section, you'll be able to see any live matches that you have any upcoming matches that you have, as well as any past matches. So um, with the matches that you get with um, this year's Gift for Good account, um, we do have additional features and functionalities that come along with those. So um, when you, you know, uh, create a match or uh, have, you know, if you wanted to edit an existing match, you can add in your name of your match sponsor, add in the match value, uh, the title, the start and end date for the match, as well as if you wanted to make it a one-to-one -one match, two to one match, three to one match, um, you know, you can just, you know, you can edit those things right on here. Um, there's lots of different, um, you know, settings and qualifications that you can add to the match if you wanted to make it, you know, uh, you know, if you wanted to make it last longer throughout the day, if you wanted to queue one match after another, uh, it's a pretty um, uh, comprehensive uh, and really strategic tool that you can use um, for your Give for Good campaign. Um, again, we have lots of resources on that. If, you know, if a match in and of itself is something you've never done, then I definitely encourage you to try and um, just make it a one-to-one -one match. Keep it, keep it nice and simple. Um, but this is the section where you can go and um, you can set, set those matches up. Um, and then if you, one thing I want to point out is at any, any page that you're at uh, within your account, um, you can find support by clicking on the gray question mark icon um, in the bottom uh, right hand corner. So if you click on this, if you're on a like, certain page like the match manager widgets, etc, it's going to offer you the suggested articles that go along with that page you're on. So you can find quick help right in these articles. You can browse help, top help topics, but you can also fill out a contact form for our support. Um, who will be able to uh, answer your question really quickly. Um, so this is a, if, you know, if you're struggling or you're confused or just need a little bit of help while you're, you know, working through your account and you're um, customizing your site, you can always go to that um, 
uh, gray question mark uh, bubble uh, in the corner and um, uh, click on that and then find the, the support you're looking for. Um, within the fundraising tool section is also where you can find the opportunities piece, piece that uh, we've been mentioning. So um, you can see I have one opportunity that's live with this organization. If I want to add an opportunity, I can click this button. Um, I can also edit uh, an opportunity at any time. Um, I can view the details. I can view anyone that's registered or signed up. I can email those people um, through the, the system as well, um, or I can delete it if I want. Um, so you can see here on the opportunities, you can choose, you know, an online or in-person event, if it's volunteering or a calendar event, um, you know, where do you manage the opportunity, you can link out to an existing um, opportunity that you have, um, or, you know, you can host the opportunity right through uh, the Gift for Good site as well. Um, you can add in any details for the opportunity, where, where it's located, um, the exact address, uh, how many, you know, uh, people can come. Um, this is optional. So like, you know, if it's an event that you want to get as many people as possible to, you don't have to like put a limit on it. Uh, you can add in a description, you can add in the contact information to the person on your end. Um, and then, uh, you, you know, you can show a date and time for the opportunity that's happening. Um, any conditions, uh, you can add multiple conditions, you can attach any files, waivers, etc, that you want um, right on your opportunity as well. As soon as you um, uh, have the so as soon as you uh, allow, you know, save the opportunity and have that there, it's going to show up in that specialized search on the Give for Good site. Uh, and that way, you know, people will immediately be able to start finding it and uh, signing up for it, being aware of it, et cetera. Um, and then that way, you know, your organization can kind of put that out there and have as many people as possible um, see what you have going on for the day, um, especially, you know, uh, like Amanda mentioned, getting the community involved, getting them excited about it, uh, with you all hosting events and doing things out there, um, getting your name out there. Um, this is a part of that, and we really encourage everyone to take advantage of this tool um, specifically. Um, the other tool I want to point out is um, our built-in fundraiser templates that you can create uh, for any peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers that you have um, who might be joining or who you want to encourage to join. So with this fundraising template, you can go in and you can pre-fill out a lot of the pieces that they would need, the individual would need to fill out when creating a peer-to-peer -peer page. So this template itself just makes it really, really easy for them when they click fundraise on your uh, profile the system will say, do you want to use this, uh, you know, template? They'll say yes, and then it'll pre-fill out everything um, that you filled in. Once they've gotten their page created, they can edit anything that they want um, on, you know, this template. So, uh, you know, if they wanted to add in, you know, here's why I love uh, this organization, here's why I volunteer for them, here's why I want to fundraise for them, like they can add in their own story. You can see they have these same capabilities on their fundraiser page, so they can add in videos of them, you know, uh, volunteering or, you know, if you're if you're an animal organization, they can show pictures of them with their favorite, uh, you know, animals at the shelter. Um, they can add in a video, uh, paragraphs, etc. And then they have their own individual link that they can then share to their friends and family. Um, not only helping your efforts, uh, but also hopefully expanding your network so that you have additional donors that you can reach out to um, during the year for any other campaigns that you do. So those are the fundraising tools that I wanted to point out. Um, reports uh, is also a great section for you to um, explore. Um, donations report is gonna be that, a donations report. Uh, the report I wanted to uh, point out uh, to you is going to be the retention report. So this report, you'll be able to use um, closer to the giving day. Um, you'll be able to come in and this report is going to uh, show you how many donors gave during that time period. Um, you know, whatever, uh, you know, it'll be the giving day last year, you can, you know, kind of choose which days that you want. And then from here, you can see who has already given um, to your campaign. Uh, you can see the amount they've given. Um, you can see, you know, this will be this will be green if they're retained. So like, yes, they have given given this year. If it's red, that means they haven't given yet. And so then you can come in and say, oh, Bethany hasn't given. She gave $50 last year. I'm going to go ahead and uh, email her. And then you can, you know, email her. This It'll connect to your email system. 
so you can go ahead and send her an email uh, to say, hey, don't forget to give. Today's the day. Uh, last year you gave $50. Um, if you want, you can also download this report. So if you wanted to upload it into your email system to sort of, you know, mass email and fill in, you know, people's names or amounts or um, then you can do that as well to make it a little easier um, for yourself. Uh, and then um, from here as well, it will update in real time. So I would recommend um, coming back here a couple times throughout the day uh, and early giving to say, okay, who gave, um, who hasn't given? And then um, you can you know, continue to ask uh, and put the word out there uh, about your campaign and remind these people that, you know, hey, today's the day, we'd love for you to give, um, here's why, et cetera. Um, the other piece of your account that I want to make sure you're aware of and really encourage you to fill out is your checkout flow. This area is gonna allow you to uh, uh, steward your donor uh, within your brand. So uh, that, you know, I feel like that's a lot of buzzwords, but um, you can fill out your donation form. When they click donate on your profile, this is, this is what they'll see. You can, you know, you can toggle off edit mode and then this is what they're going to see. So you can see what it'll look like for them. Uh, there's a link right here where you can copy direct to donate link. So if you are the type of organization who wants to share the direct donation link and you don't want people to go to your profile, totally fine. Copy the link there for the donation uh, form, and then you can send that off in your emails. And then when people click on it, they'll be brought directly to your donation form. Do not pass code. Hopefully you collect $200. But um, on this page, you can turn on the edit mode. You can add in suggested donation amounts. So, um, you know, if you wanted, you know, this, this uh, sample org has $40, we'll get 10 pounds of dog food. Uh, you can add more than four. I, I, you can, Technically, you can add as many as you want. I do not recommend adding more than six. So the sweet spots between four and six, four is probably better. But if you, you know, if you really want to, you can add six. Um, but I don't really recommend going over that. Donors can add in any donation amount that they want. That they want. So if somebody wanted to give, you know, one hundred and one dollars, then they would just add that there. Um, donors also have the ability to choose their anonymity. Um, so if they wanted to hide their amount, you know, if they wanted to show up as anonymous um, to the public, that they can they can choose to do that. Um, you can choose to allow them to um, add in dedications. Uh, you can choose them uh, to allow designations. Um, you can choose, uh, you can add in, you know, if you wanted uh, different sections, um, you know, any additional questions that you want them. I think you get one, uh, you know, additional custom question if you wanted to um, allow for that. And then this section down here is not editable, but, you know, we wanted you to see what the actual donation form looked like. Um, but when you've, you've, when you're done setting it up, um, I always recommend, you know, uh, turn it off edit mode, see what your donors will see. Um, and then once early giving starts, make a donation. Uh, to your organization so you can see what, you know, that looks like um, on, you know, the whole flow, et cetera. Um, you can review that during, uh, you know, be beforehand. So it's not like, you know, I, it's not, shouldn't be a surprise, but um, if you wanted to, and then kind of kickstart everything, um, have, you know, some of your volunteers make a donation, et cetera, um, then this section you can find in your checkout um, section on your profile. The other piece that we encourage you to fill out is the thank you page that donors receive after their donation is complete. Um, so uh, from here, they'll see, you know, thank you for donating, your receipt has been emailed, um, and then uh, your specific thank you will show up on uh, that confirmation, donation confirmation screen that your donors get. So from here, you can add in, you know, a video, you can add in images, um, you know, you can bring people, you know, add a button to bring people wherever you want after that. So this is a really important piece to continue that stewardship um, for your donors. Um, if you wanted, you know, um, them to go back to your website, if you want them to go back to your organization profile on Give for Good, um, uh, then, you know, you can do that there as well. Uh, but this is a great, great spot for you to uh, add in a thank you to them because um, it, it really is awesome that they're donating to you and supporting you during Give for Good. And so this is a great way for you to show your appreciation in a 
uh, you know, visible way um, by adding, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you wanted to do like a little thank you video and add that on here. Um, I've seen people do that before and it's kind of fun because then donors have that interaction piece that they can um, uh, take advantage of and see. Um, the last thing in this section that I wanted to show you uh, is the donation receipt. So um, like Amanda said, all of your donors will be getting a receipt after they complete the transaction. Um, this spot here is a great place for you to add an additional thank you uh, for your donors that they get right away. So while you know um, the community foundation doesn't need you to send out any you know of your own like thank yous after the fact, you have a spot here that will that you can provide a customized message to your donors to tell them thank you um, on their emailed receipt that they get. So there's lots of different places within this checkout flow that you can customize and make it you know really make people feel really warm and fuzzy about donating to your organization. And so I really encourage you to take advantage of each of those pieces um, uh, so that, you know, they just, they feel really good because when they feel really good, then chances are they will want to donate to you again. Um, the last thing I want to point out in our platform walkthrough is the settings area. Um, so uh, general setting um, this is where you can go to customize your organization's URL. Uh, so if you want a different URL, what we, what we did when we migrated over all of your information, we really tried our best to match your, or the URL that you had in your old platform to the new platform. With some of you, we weren't exactly able to do that because somebody might have already had the URL, but if you wanted to update your URL for whatever reason, um, you can come to this general settings area URL customization, and then customize it there. If you've already shared out your link and you want to customize your URL after that, that is okay. The system kind of keeps that and it will, you know, if somebody clicks on an old link, it'll still take them to your new, like the new link. So, um, you know, if you, I don't know, some people make that mistake or are concerned about that, but don't worry. Um, this is also, the general settings is also where you can come in to add alternate search names. So if your organization goes by, you know, a couple of different things that people know you for, then you can add those in here and that will be taken into consideration when people are in the gift for good search, looking for organizations to donate to or looking for your organization because maybe they came outside of, you know, wherever you shared um, your um, page. Um, then they can go to the search and then they can type in um, and the search will include these in, you know, the results if somebody's looking for your organization um, or happen to search um, for that. Uh, let's see. And then this section is also where you can customize your social sharing uh, piece that people like. So if they click share on your organization profile, then, you know, the little preview that pops up. Um, on, you know, if they're Facebook share or um, wherever they're sharing, then you have the ability to customize that uh, in your profile. So again, under settings, there's general settings, scroll down, and you'll see social sharing, you can add in an image, you can add in, you know, the uh, title, description, um, etc. And then that will, uh, you know, that will kind of help provide uniformity for those that are sharing. And uh, it's like a template. So it makes it easier and quicker for them to share as well. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to point out in the settings section is the admin section. So if you need to add any new admins to your profile to help you manage this year's gift for good, this is the section where you can do that. If you need to remove any individuals, um, then you can do that here as well. Um, if anyone, you know, if there's like an old admin that's on there that shouldn't have access anymore, you can take them off. Um, uh, from here as well. If you have any questions about people, again, this little gray um, support button is going to be there pretty much everywhere. So you can click on that and, uh, you know, see the suggested articles, browse the help topics, or fill out a contact form uh, for, for our support to be able to help you. Um, I covered everything I wanted to cover. Amanda, is there anything else that you would like me to point out while I'm in the platform? Um, I don't think so. I think you went through it all um, pretty well. And 
you know, I, I'm happy to answer questions or if anyone has questions, I will say, just speaking of admins, I encourage you to please go in there and clean that up um, for just so you know, any communication that we send through Mighty Calls, which you will get some of those, those will go to all the admins on there. Um, we've sent out several communications and a lot of people have bounced back. So please, if you don't mind, just clean that up. Um, and that way we are contacting the best people. Um, I can't think of anyone, but we do have some questions or anything else, but I do have some questions um, in the q and I've tried to answer some, but Dawn, there's one question about opportunities. Can you use that for employment? And I think the answer is no, but I wanted to make sure. Um, that is for correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess, I mean, we're, you can technically use it for whatever you want, but the options on there currently are um, going to be uh, in person or online. So I guess if you have, if you have like a, like a volunteer uh, or, or um, you know, like a job fair or something, then you, you could put that on there if you wanted. Um, it would probably be in person and a calendar event, and then you can describe it. So it's pretty flexible. Um, so if you wanted to use it for something like that, you would have to, there's, there's a couple pieces that are, um, you know, that are set, like, you know, the location can't be anything other than in person or online, but if you can be flexible with those, then you can really be flexible with the rest of it as well. So good question. And then the next question was from Bonnie, who um, asked if you could have multiple fundraiser templates. Uh, so yes and no. So yes, you get one fundraiser template that comes with gift for good. If you want more than one, then that more than one fundraiser template comes with our like higher package. Um, you all don't have, you all don't have to pay for anything um, for any of the tools that I showed you today for gift for good, but we do have some additional like higher tier tools um, like uh, text to give the additional fundraisers. Um, we have like a, a basic CRM, et cetera, that you could get with a higher package, but there is, you are under no obligation to do that. You get all, all the tools that you need, you have for gift for good. Um, so there you go. Okay. And is there an admin limit? No, there's not. Nope. Okay. Um, and just under, under the opportunities, yes, you can highlight an event that you're having any time in the year. I mean, the idea is that people will come here throughout the year to learn about all the great work that's uh, happening in our community and learn about your organization. So that will be up um, all year round. And then you can have your volunteer opportunities, your events, um, whatever hosted there, if you would like. I want to show the that we did. So it looks like we have one opportunity so far. So I encourage you all to add in your opportunity so there's more than one. Uh, but this is the search that people will see when they go to the Gift for Good site. They'll click on community events, come here. They can filter um, uh, to get their specific events that they are volunteer opportunities that they want to be a part of um, and, uh, and then see all of the options available to them. And then when they come here, they can, you know, click on the opportunity, they can go to your organization page, they could register um, for the opportunity. Um, and then this link, this will go to wherever you've, you know, when you set up the opportunity, that registration link will either take them to the registration page you have on a different site or uh, through the Mighty Cause site if, you, if you're hosting it all in app. Um, while we're on the Give for Good site, can we yeah. show them the tools and resources page? Yes. So if you go to nonprofits, tools and resources, so this is a great space for you to see all the important dates that are coming up, the training we're having right now, uh, the next webinar that we're having, um, you can sign up for it right now as well, uh, advanced giving date, and then obviously the give for good date. Um, obviously, uh, I encourage you all to add all of these to your calendars, um, but those are the important dates that um, we definitely wanted you to think about. There's this handy section right here um, that is all about getting started. So 
if you're brand new and you've never done online fundraising before, or you're new at it, um, or you just want to make sure you have your basics covered, this section here is going to tell you, okay, here's how you can complete your to-do list. Um, here's how you can customize your organization page. Here's how, you know, the ins and outs of your organization dashboard that we looked at, and then editing your nonprofit's checkout flow that we looked at too. Um, and then, you know, if you want to take it to the next level, uh, walking through the analytics on the overview page, matching grants, et cetera, the fundraiser template. And then if you're like, I've got this in the bag, I know what I'm doing, I'm awesome, um, which all of you are awesome. But if you're like, I feel really awesome, then pro, you know, all about peer to peer, the widget, referral codes, and then donor retention report. Um, so there's this is just a you know sampling of the many support articles we have. If you want you know more, then again the the gray question mark you can see um, you know fill out the contact form, browse help topics, etc. Uh, will help get you the support that you need here as well. Um, and then further on in the tools and resources, we have additional webinars that you can watch now. Um, and then all the marketing resources that the Community Foundation has provided for you. Lots of logos um, in different, you know, shapes and sizes and colors. Um, uh, so lots and lots, as you can see, um, are here for you to be able to take advantage of. Um, additional marketing materials, um, ebooks and webinars that you can take advantage of as well. These are just a few that we've pulled out. Um, as you know, examples, but you can you know download these if it's an ebook, watch now, et cetera. Um, so there's lots and lots of tools uh, and um, you know resources for you within this uh, tools and resources section of the site. Um, and actually, one thing I wanted to point out that I did not when I was in the organization uh, page was your to do list. Um, so that is, you can find that on essentially any page that you go to, the to-do list will be here. Um, and you can see what the Community Foundation has recommended that you finish um, or require you to finish. Yours will look different from this because it is, this is a sample site, but um, this is a really great place. This to-do list is a great place for you to say, where do I even get started in customizing my page? What is the bare minimum that I need to do or that you know I should do? This to-do list is a great place for you to kind of get your bearings um, because it is a lot. Uh, and so, um, you know, to what is the minimum, you know, minimum that I need to do, this to-do list would be it. So oh, um, can I say something real quick yeah, um, about that? I get a lot of questions lately about, hey, I've done everything that I think I'm supposed to do, but my to-do list still shows that something is outstanding. A lot of times what I'm finding is that it is your um, cover photo right so that header photo right there um, behind your logo so make sure you have something there even if it is one of the stock images that mighty cause provides then the other thing is um, your social media links so even if you have your um, social media gallery linked to your page where you can see all of your posts you still need to fill it out in the summary section and link it so that way people can click directly on it the images that you'll show through the through the gallery are just um, simply that. Like they can't, if, unless I'm wrong. No, if they're those, just images, you yeah, don't click them to they, visit. Yeah, so you definitely want to be able to link people directly to your page. Um, there was one other thing that I, oh, someone asked about the toolkit, but speaking of that. Um, so just so you know, the toolkit is located under the nonprofit tab. Um, on the menu on the gift for good page so that is on our site that is specific to our giving day so you'll go to um, click that uh, just get to the home page and then if you scroll down you'll see the nonprofits tab and it is under there so speaking of we have a new brand obviously if you've participated in the past you recognize that the logo is different we did that um, as uh, just being in the 10th year, we wanted to freshen it up. We wanted to give it a new look and we really wanted it to um, tie to the community foundation so that people know that that is an event that we host um, for the nonprofit. It is our gift to the nonprofit community. So we, um, we rebranded. So what we ask is that you please, if you have old logos, 
old, um, you know, backdrops, anything like that, please do not use those. If we see them, we'll probably contact you to move to um, replace them. We just want to make sure that we are consistent with um, our branding and make sure all of our marketing out there in the community reflects the new logo. So they're all there for you. Um, Ashley has set all that up. Ashley has also created a brand guide if you need that for your reference. And then also if there, we have, a, can you scroll down, Dawn? I think yeah. we have our backdrops and stuff, which we may not. Um, no. But if if you, we do have some backdrops available, like you'll see like the Shreveport uh, cityscape, similar to what's behind us, um, but it's a drawing. And then we have the the green backdrop that you'll see. So if you wanted to use some of those, uh, just reach out to us and we can provide those for you um, to create your own graphics. So just super important. Awesome. Um, I see one more question in there. Um, how can we learn more about the higher tiers? If you are interested in exploring that, um, curious, you can go to uh, your organization profile. Um, there's plan management under settings. And then from here, uh, this, this demo site's already set up on it, but this that area of the site gives you the opportunity to have a free two-week trial of all the tools. Um, you don't have to put in um, your credit card. It's completely, you know, you can just do, uh, set it up and use it. Um, and then uh, there's also uh, pieces on here that allows you to set it up if you would like, um, but it has all the information on what's included in each plan um, under settings, plan management. Um, and then you can kind of make the decision to see what would be best for your organization. Um, and then it is monthly. You can do it monthly or annually. So if you only wanted to use it during the gift for good season, totally fine. You can cancel afterwards. Um, but it's there under settings for you to be able to um, review uh, everything about it. Um, and then if you, I think there's a, um, you can also have a link. There's a link there too uh, for a demo if you wanted to get a demo of all the tools, um, all the additional tools as well. So. Um, okay, I think I wanted Under. to, yes. No, you go. Okay, now we're back. Okay, now we're <laughs> back. So, uh, okay, so get support, obviously very important for the giving day. We want you all to feel um, good and prepared and comfortable. Um, so technical support, anything that has to do with the website, anything that has to do with a computer or, uh, you know, technical related, then uh, like I mentioned a couple times, you have that gray support bubble um, that follows you around in your account. Click on that. It'll give you the suggested articles that go with the page that you're on. You can also contact our support team really easily through that. Um, uh, or our direct email is support at mightycause.com. Our team is really nice. Um, and uh, if you're super nice to them, they might tell you a joke, uh, which are always on point. But uh, definitely take advantage of them, use them. They know what they're doing, um, a lot of times more than me. Um, and so uh, please, you know, take advantage of them. For program support, anything that doesn't have to do with a computer specifically or is anything tech related, uh, that's when you can reach out to Amanda um, and her team over at the Community Foundation. So the email for that is giftforgood at cfnla.org. Um, and I think, Amanda, if if there is a tech related question, um, will you refer them to support? If I can answer it, no, I will answer it. But if it is super techie and I'm not really sure, um, you were probably better off reaching out to support just for a quick answer, um, because more than likely, if I can answer it, I will have to reach out to them. So uh, <laughs> just re encourage you to use that just for, you know, for your convenience and saving time. But I am happy to assist as needed, um, especially if you have like numerous questions and part of it is about programming, part of it's technical support. I'm happy to uh, um, address those questions and to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. um, our team also knows about, you know, they have a well-rounded knowledge of what is happening for Give for Good as well. So if you have a technical question and you have a programmatic question, um, you're always welcome to email, I mean, you could email both if you want, both emails. So, uh, but um, I also wanna point out our support forum. Um, that is, uh, you can reach that, you know, you can email for that, but it's also through that gray 
uh, bubble as well. You can access the support forum. Um, again, there's lots and lots of great articles, uh, help articles, et cetera, in there um, to really that deep dive. There's um, uh, uh, images in there too, screenshots, et cetera, to help give you uh, support. And then lastly, we do offer phone support too, uh, for those of you who might be uh, tech challenged. Um, our phone support number is here. Um, you do get faster responses through email, I will say, partially because we get a lot of information when you submit a ticket that helps our team kind of cut through what would normally be like three or four emails um, or 15 minutes, like 10 minutes or a couple minutes on the phone. So if you need you know, help, uh, and it definitely takes a phone and you might want to do a screen share because you're just like really not sure, um, then we're happy to help you with that. Uh, and our number is there uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 Central um, for that support. Email support uh, is going to be Monday through Friday as well, same times. Um, but on the day of, we will be available for you 24 hours. Um, so uh, and then obviously the help articles are there at any time. Uh, they don't sleep. So. Um, so basically you have tons of support, so please utilize it. Um, and, you know, we are here for you for all the things that you might need. Um, there's a question about the support forum link as an email address. Is that, do they need to email that email to get access to that? Or is that just? No, I, that was, I should have added the link. I, that was okay. my mistake. Enough. So thank, thank you. I, I need more coffee. It's not. So what it, can you send the link in the chat or the, uh, yeah, in the chat for people? Yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Um, and then is the interface different for Macs? I have Windows and I'm having trouble finding how to add administrators. Um, it should I mean, not be different. I wouldn't the think so. Interface. Um, I would. Uh, Are you, so you, I think you're the same person who said earlier that you were having trouble. You weren't seeing the same thing. And I want to make sure that you're logged in to your organization. Are you on the right site? Yeah. We've had that so before too. Let's touch on that real quick. So I've gotten that a few times. Okay. So you, when you were logged into your account, you could potentially have a donor account. And so that's where you would, um, you know, be giving to an organization. So if you click on your little icon at the top right where it says your name make sure that you're on your organization right Dawn like you have to yes. click on the um, I forget exactly how it is labeled but you right would then. see your organization down below um, and so just make sure you're always on that in order to see your page so you're you click on your name and then under the organization section you'll see your organization page you can click on this and it will bring you to where I am now your organization account. And then so from there. That, that was the oh, issue. Okay. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's, we're, we're over time um, and I want to be cognizant um, of everyone's time. So um, Amanda, if you want to uh, walk through yep. what they can expect in webinar two, that would be great. Yes. So two weeks from today is the next webinar and that is going to cover like just a deep dive into the strategies um, that we suggest for making your day as successful as possible. So that is what, like Dawn said earlier, we're going to cover the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Um, something that's new this year is like, if you have a business um, that wants to support your organization, like they can create a page and encourage their employees to give to your organization. Um, and then the going into more about matching grants and then um, just all the, ins and outs of uh, marketing tips as far as email, social media strategies to engage your donors, uh, volunteers, board, et cetera. So all of the things that you'll need to know to make sure that you are fully prepared and engaging as many people as possible to give to your organization. So we highly encourage that. Um, it will, if you've been on the marketing uh, trainings in the past, it will include more than what we've covered in the past. So definitely please attend. Um, for this webinar, if you missed it, we will be sending out um, to the um, participating admins the link to watch it um, after. So it is recorded.
Um, the other thing I want to mention is um, we did offer an in-person option for this, but when we were working through it, as I reached out to some of you who were going to attend in person, because I needed to be on the Zoom in order to have a quality recording and in order to um, for both audiences to hear me, we decided that I needed to also attend via Zoom. So it really doesn't make sense to have an in-person option. We will continue to offer that if you really want to be here with us um, watching a webinar, but that is exactly what you'll be doing is watching um, the webinar from our office. So we'll probably um, leave it as it is, but definitely encourage you to just sign up to attend via Zoom. Okay, so I think that is it. If there's no more questions, I see a few. Um, okay, no, that's um, it. Those are the old questions. So yeah, uh, in the chat, Lucy asked, "What is a good number of email I can contact if we need to borrow one of your signs today?" Oh, one of your, one of our signs today. I think yard sign. Yeah, well, we will have yard signs, and um, in the next training, we'll talk about all of the different marketing. Um, tools that we offer for you through our partners that they offer for you to take advantage of and so we'll we'll go into all of that next time but the signs um, we do we'll have new ones this year obviously because of the new brand and so we'll con we'll, we'll be sending out emails updating all of you um, about all of those ins and outs so please make sure if you um if you've noticed that any of our emails are going to your junk or spam or other or promotional box please do whatever you need to do to make sure those come to your inbox because a lot of really important information will come to that, um, come via MailChimp and sometimes that gets filtered out. So just or if do what you can. you realize you're not getting any emails. Yes, and if that's the case, like you probably kidding. need to reach out to us because you probably have missed something. So um, we will send a reminder about the new, uh, about the next webinar. And then from there, you'll start getting more um, emails from us as it gets closer to the date. So I hope everyone enjoyed it. Um, thank you for the positive feedback that I just saw in the chat. Um, we are really, really excited about this new platform. I think it's going to just give all of us an, an added opportunity to do our, our best and raise the most money um, and get the word out about our organizations. And so we are really excited. Thank you, Dawn, for all of your knowledge. I learned a few new things today. So, <laughs> Great. Um, that's always helpful. But um, please just contact us if you need anything, and we will uh, see you in two weeks. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.